So, uh, yeah, first off, I, uh, I want to want, want to talk a little bit about the flaws of fair ordering. Um, and this is not meant as a, uh, a, a attack on any of the people who, who worked on it before. I think like there's a really interesting idea, uh, in social to take some of the ideas from social choice theory and apply them to, uh, to try to make blockchains more fair. But, uh, I think there's there's no way of doing it in the way that people have tried. There might be some other stuff. Hopefully, we'll end with some positive notes. But uh, before that, let's bring out the hatchet. Um, so Tina, uh, as as previous speakers have also mentioned, um, forced us to to say the word mevconomic somewhere. Um, in in my case, I uh, I, I unlike John and James, uh, kind of sort of wrote a slide. Uh, and the idea is that I, and this is a quote from one of the papers on fair ordering, which is fair ordering guarantees specific ordering in a finalized ledger on how transactions arrive to the network to reduce minor acceptable value. Yet all, virtually all fair ordering mechanisms say nothing about the economics of what they do. They, they guarantee that like some subsets of orderings will be respected. Other ones will not ever happen, but they never tell you the cost of that or whether certain payout functions change with that. So one question is, if we're putting all this extra onus and extra work on top of validators, what's the real economic value of it? Is there economic value? Is it harmful? And that's sort of the main thing we'll be covering. So, um, you know, what is fair ordering? So fair ordering is a mechanism that coerces honest validators to respect a particular set of orderings or transactions, i.e. first come first serve, block order fairness, uh, block batch order fairness, um, all of the papers are not duplicitous. They do all point out this fact that it's actually impossible to attain perfectly. Uh, Kenneth Arrow won the Nobel Prize in economics for proving this, which is that in, in ranked choice voting. So you can think of a ranked choice vote as a validator giving you an order permutation of sequence of transactions, uh, and then sort of aggregating the vote together to, to construct a final outcome that it's impossible to get something that doesn't centralize, that doesn't have what's sort of known as a dictatorship. So instead, fair ordering tries to, you know, make algorithms that are approximately the average or majority vote or some type of some type of property for most ordering. So, you know, here I put two different definitions. The other thing that's kind of funny about all these papers is they all have slightly different definitions of whether a batch is fair or not. Um, and they all involve sort of extra data, like some notion of timestamps and some assumptions of honesty amongst the validators. Um, thank you to John for making this meme. Um, but there's something weird about these definitions, right? These definitions are properties of partial orders. They don't say anything about the economic value per unit partial order. Yet, on the other hand, if you think about MEV, MEV is actually an economic profit, a rent that is extracted. That rent has a size, it has a magnitude. Um, and I think, you know, the, the three main papers on fair ordering, so Themis, uh, Aquitas, and uh, Quick Block Ordering, um, they had, like, good intentions, but they completely ignore the economics, and they're like, hey, you do this thing, it's this combinatorial thing, um, we restrict the sets of ordering, uh, and it gets rid of MEV. And it's it's kind of a crazy statement to make because, again, you don't quantify the actual amount of MEV or the value, and you're agnostic to all applications, which doesn't really make much sense, right? There's a reason that certain applications generate, you know, very regular MEV like AMMs. Some generate very spiky MEV like liquidations or NFT auctions. Those are very different things. You can't really tell me that this ordering is universal to all of them. And so that's the thing we're going to kind of explain today to try to dismantle this kind of shambolic industry of, 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 of hoping that we can, uh, you know, violate the, the natural laws of social choice theory. So, you know, is it really a good idea to cause these, you know, to, to have validators have to do all this extra work when it, it doesn't really have an economic payoff and hopefully you'll be convinced at least somewhat, you know, the full paper will be out soon so you can see the proof, but, uh, that it's actually harmful in some cases. So I want to also give a bit of uh, a bit of historical context from 
uh, other fields. So other fields that, that use social trust theory, especially things in decision theory, things in AI, um, have studied order fairness in different contexts, especially with regards to model quality or like how much you, you, you mutate a model by giving some fairness guarantees and they get these impossibility results. Um, the difference is model quality is, is a bit like MEV's economic value. There's still these kind of continuous magnitude objective functions depend on the input data, depend on the particular thing you're inferring, but they all get these impossibility theorems. So why should you not expect that for fair ordering? Okay. So, you know, I've had my my uh my fun but now, now now we actually have to go into to what it is about fair ordering that's so weird so to try to dismantle uh fair ordering what we do is we consider a two-player game um one player is the fair ordering protocol that is proffering a set of orderings of transactions that are that um, are allowed to be executed and the other you can think of as an adversarial DeFi developer. So someone who is making a protocol that's trying to cause the fair ordering to be give a worse um, value for the, the users of the protocol. The, the rough game mechanics are nature draws a set of transactions. So that's users generating sets of transactions. The developer plays first and constructs a protocol. So think like a DeFi protocol um, adapted to the set of transactions. Um, and the protocol is a payoff function. So we'll talk a little bit about what those are in a second, but you can think of the payoff function as the expected value for the user. Then the second player, the fair ordering protocol, draws a set of permutations from the symmetric group, that's SN, that's a set of permutations, uh, and it draws it from a distribution P. Um, and so one reason that you have this distribution is, of course, in, in most fair ordering protocols, there's some extra metadata, like the timestamps of when people, different um, validators receive certain transactions, that adds some randomness. And that randomness means that there's not a unique ordering. Again, errors and possibility theorem sort of guarantees that. So there's a sort of set of orderings. And it'll turn out that the size of the set of orderings controls uh, how well the, 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 the fair ordering protocol can win in this two-player game. And finally, uh, a value V is realized uh, based on these. So without getting too, too in the weeds, uh, to the right, you'll see something that defines the value of a protocol P, which you know, we can talk about by its distribution of uh, orderings it generates. And we can we consider a min-max law. So if you've seen sort of classical, classical game theory, classical von Neumann, Morgenstern stuff, this is just traditional min-max. And there's a loss function, which takes in an ordering, that's a permutation pi in the symmetric group, uh, uh, and a uh, payoff function, f. And this loss function is meant to measure some notion of fairness. And we'll talk about how there are different, no different loss functions will give you different notions of fairness, but you sort of want this game to qualitatively have the same winner, like usually the DeFi developer wins, for many loss functions, even if I perturb it. And so in this game, the value of the game, if the game is positive, the adversary, the DeFi protocol developer, win. If the value is negative, the fair ordering protocol win. And of course, this will depend on the loss function, but we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. So why does this represent fair ordering protocols? You know, abstractly, again, you can view a fair ordering protocol as taking each validator set, so transactions, and some metadata associated to those transactions, like timestamps. And the fair ordering protocol outputs a single permutation of those transactions in the set of allowable transactions, H. Um, but the thing is, there's many of these H. And, and the key uh, thing we'll find out is that fair ordering protocols don't make H that small. And that's where the adversarial developer can take advantage of them. Again, the randomness comes from network latency, user demand, etc. And you know, how do we how do we bound V, this value of this game? Well, there's combinatorial constraints that arise from the set H. Another way of looking at this is, given enough noise or entropy in the sets of permutations you're allowed, you can almost surely construct a payoff where if I restrict to those sets, I get a worse value than if I am unrestricted. And basically what 
the proof does is we explicitly construct a DeFi protocol whose rules for when liquidations are allowed to happen uh, exactly is optimized to be bad on these permutations generated by the fair ordering. Um, in fact, the liquidation rules draw a lot of inspiration from a protocol many of you might know, which is Liquidity. LUSD, they have a, a staking pool that um, li auto liquidates uh, LUSD uh, issued assets. And uh, the only difference is that instead of giving per rata rewards, we give fixed rewards, but it, it's a little bit more complicated to describe. And what is what this sort of says is fair ordering preferences particular applications. So this application that looks like a, a DeFi protocol that has particular liquidation rules, uh, it, it has a worse value for users under fair ordering, which means that other protocols that have the same value, uh, you know, are are sort of preferenced. And so there's there's sort of this very interesting thing that a fair ordering protocol is is sort of picking winners and losers implicitly. So now the next question is, what is this notion of a payoff? So a payoff represents the ec economic value each user represent, uh, gains from a particular set of transactions. A user payoff is a function from the symmetric group to the reals. Um, you can decompose uh, any payoff into this kind of sum over indicator functions. And this, you know, some of the end results we'll talk about at the end, which I'll just sort of give a preview of, rely on sort of some of the decomposition properties there. So what are examples of payoffs? Uh, one example is just an AMM payoff. Um, and in, in this paper earlier, uh, we analyzed sort of how MEV payoffs for sandwich attacks look under permutations and then sort of get some bounds there. The other example is liquidations. And you can think of a liquidation as really an indicator function that's parameterized on a price and a threshold. So if the value of the assets below some threshold, that's the indicator function. Um, then you you know you realize a profit and if it's not it's zero and you can sort of look at this as a barrier option as well so the real question is how do you choose this loss function well there's a couple of different ways to define sort of fairness one one version of fairness is the extremes what's the difference between the best case ordering like the the one that maximizes social welfare and the worst case ordering the one that minimizes social welfare and uh, that should say best not bays um the other is sort of mean. So what's the deviation of a given ordering away from from sort of the average? Like is, is a particular, you know, how much does do the orderings fluctuate around the average? We want to choose L, this loss function, in such a way to be robust to perturbations. And uh, an interesting thing is that, um, you know, for, you know, finite groups, there's actually ways to generate kind of lower bounds on things like V, like this value of this game that we talked about. Um, these are uncertainty principles. They're very, they're sort of these finite group uncertainty principles are similar, but quite different to the uncertainty principle you might have learned in, in a physics class or a real analysis class. Um, but the interesting thing is that you may, you may now ask this question, is there an uncertainty principle for, for MEV here? Um, and there's a very interesting, you know, that sort of the, the final thing we'll see is that there's sort of this trade-off between how much you restrict the set of orderings and how manipulable a payoff function is. And that, that trade-off you, you has sort of this lower bound and that's sort of this this hidden hidden cost and sort of, you know, complexity cost in MEV, which is is the reason these fair ordering things sort of can fail. Uh, so now let's find out how much orderings cost. So the claim is, suppose I have the distribution P that generates ordering, um, and suppose that with very high probability, the size of H is omega of n factorial. That means it's it's uh, a percentage of the total number of permutations. And if L is deviation from worst case, so the extrema, then you can show the value of the game is bounded by a positive constant which in word says if the value if the number of fair orderings is sufficiently large then this minimax value is positive and this sort of defi protocol we constructed always sort of does worse when you use fair ordering another way of viewing this is fair ordering is actually discriminatory to particular protocols so you might say okay well is it really realistic that a fair ordering thing generates omega of n factorial 
permutations? Shouldn't it just be generating like constant in the number of transactions? Um, and where you would, where this logic sort of falls, falls apart is um, if you actually look at random ordered elections or random elections, and this was studied in 19th century uh, by some some actually French sort of philosophers who also did social choice theory, uh, and this guy Gilbaud who kind of proved this some very bizarro formula that in a random ranked election with three candidates, there is a 91% chance uh, that you don't have a Condorcet paradox. A Condorcet paradox is candidate A beats candidate B on a pairwise election basis. Candidate B beats candidate C on a pairwise election basis, but candidate C beats candidate A on a pairwise election basis. Um, and so when you have those types of loops, then you have no perfect ranked ordering. And that's sort of like the simplest version of this. And, you know, again, to the credit of, of, of Themis and Aquitas and all, all these papers, they, they admit that this, this is a flaw of theirs. The problem is such a thing guarantees that under enough, with enough randomness, your set of orderings is still omega of n factorial. It's still a percentage of the, the, perme of the symmetric group. And so that sort of says uh, the, the hypotheses here are pretty likely to happen unless your timestamp distribution is really, really degenerate. Okay, so I've given you all this bad news. Uh, and, you know, a lot, a lot of it involves like, you know, game theory, math, whatever. Is there anything you should be happy about? And, and what I would say, you know, maybe the, the positives you should take out, there are probably ways to do application specific order preferences. So there are two results in this uh, frame of mind. Um, the first one, which uh, it released yesterday um, by Co and Guillermo, um, is basically they looked at the kind of arbitrum first come first serve mechanism, and they only looked at the top transaction. So they don't care about the whole ordering; they care just about the top transaction. And they they were able to write a linear program to be able to bound its gap, and they were able to get a lower bound uh, on the ratio of the price from. Um, the optimal uh, ordering versus the sort of like first come first serve ordering and show a lower bound so that it's always worse uh, it, under some conditions. And so that's a kind of very nice, simple version that doesn't capture all MEV, but it, it, it kind of gets you at least, you know, kind of the minimum viable example. And then this, these papers from us um, that basically construct the uncertainty principle and these uncertainty principles give you this lower bound. The uncertainty principles actually show you things akin to the following, uh, where you can bound sort of the, the worst case part of the minimax loss by lower bound by a polynomial in something known as the, the Fourier degree of the payoff function, uh, and also upper bound it in terms of Fourier degree. So what this says is you can actually control the fairness it measured in these, in, in sort of like the deviation from worst case. Um, by the it is related how how well you can actually achieve some fairness is related to the sort of inherent computational complexity of the payoff function specified by your program uh and you know i think that's actually you know a really interesting thing because it basically says hey there's a reason people optimize smart contract programs for being less complex they actually have less of this worst case unfair bound the upper bound in this case so with that probably did go over time, so uh, I'll answer some questions in the chat.